Hello viewers, welcome to this edition of Women in Mobility. Our guest for today is Ms. Sindhu Nadigar, Team Manager, Embedded Security at Electrobit India. Sindhu Nadigar is a trailblazer in the tech world, breaking barriers in a family with a legal background to pioneer her journey into the realm of engineering. Her passion for technology ignited early, making her the first in her family to venture into the world of engineering. Fast forward to today. Sindhu currently holds the position of Team Manager of Product Development and Embedded Security at Electrobit. In this role, she spearheads the development and operational aspects of embedded security products, ensuring the seamless adoption and deployment of the company's cutting-edge solutions to deliver maximum value to customers. Let's welcome Sindhu Nadigar. Sindhu, welcome to the show. Thank you. Sindhu, can you talk a little bit about your early days of education and early days of career? Yeah, I did my schooling in KMWA Vidyani Ketan in Bangalore. And then I started with uh, the plus two in uh, S. Nijilingapa PU College in Bangalore. And then I pursued uh, engineering with MS Ramaya Institute of Technology in the field of instrumentation. Uh, so going back to school days, I still remember science and maths were my favorite subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, so the more and more I started learning about these subjects, uh, the more and more the interest and curiosity started growing. Uh, so I started relating it to the day-to-day -day applications, what we were having mm -hmm. and try to bring in the relativity with respect to the theory and what we have in the system in and around. So the curiosity grew and then I uh, pursued with science, uh, PCMB combination uh, in the plus two and then I took up instrumentation in MS Ramanya Institute of Technology. So back in those days, uh, instrumentation field was a bit rare and not much of people were exposed or knowing much about it. Uh, so I coming from a lab, law background, so my um, father and my other uncles were the in the law background with the lawyers and um, my maternal uncle uh, who had pursued something similar in this field of instrumentation in diploma so we carefully thought about it we looked up the subjects and this seemed to be more interesting for me as it is a good amalgamation of electrical electronics and computers so i also learned about digital signal processing and c++ um, in this field so I, I think that's one of the good combination I could see in the field of engineering uh, at that point of time. And then in the early days of career, I started with Honeywell and then with Wipro, Bosch and today with Electrobit. Oh, great. You from law background and then you chose science engineering. Oh. Uh, have you ever felt you missed out some subject? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, so science were and maths were two things which I completely focused upon. But of late, I now realize geography is also something very important and which is applicable in today's day-to-day -to -day life. So when you're working with the international teams, uh, so you knowing about the different culture, their traditions and their cultural map will bring in a different associations uh, with the team members and also when you're trying to lead an international team. So, so you would know what to expect. Mm. Uh, so in such uh, teams, so you're better prepared. The more the exposure, I think the more um, the knowledge is. So you we get to see the multidimensional view for mm. the same topic. Mm. Interesting. Were there challenges during your initial days of career? Yeah, I think there were many challenges. Uh, the one which I uh, very predominantly remember is uh, uh, back in those days, uh, getting into a core company is something very uh, big that time. So uh, getting into the the first company so uh, was very important and uh, getting into the core company. So I, that's how I started with Honeywell Technologies mm -hmm. and uh, very excited. But unfortunately, this excitement did not last for very right. long. So yeah, so when you're starting your career that time, I think it's not alone your decision, but I think the family decision will also have an important influence during that crucial time when you're initially starting your career. Um, so I had to join that day and I had to resign and come back on the same day because of uh, I'm basically from Bangalore and then there were certain personal situations. So that's where uh, I could not um, stay in Madurai for a very long time. And uh, so I had to come back to Bangalore with a heavy heart. 
and then i started um, and then one fine day my principal called me from the college of uh, ms ramaya and uh, he asked me that why don't you come and help me out in the university so i carefully thought about it discussed with the family also uh i thought then why not we can try this option since my second offer was with, with the another software company was uh, six months of delay so i took up this opportunity so i also had a good academic background i topped in instrumentation in that year so uh, all this helped me to prepare and then uh, finally the selection went and i was selected um so uh, it, it's altogether a different experience uh, so we were uh, being listening on this side all these years when i have to go on the other side of the platform uh, your teachers are your colleagues now so it's altogether a different experience uh, that's where i um, understood the value of preparation so uh, preparation is very important and uh, it's altogether a different experience as a lecturer as the a uh, journey continued i started enjoying more and more the labs apart from theory mm. so each problem solved was giving me a sense of contentment and satisfaction so then i realized that um, uh, it is that hardware and the software is something which i really like about it and i enjoy something so all this helped me to reshape myself and it, there was a pivotal shift mm. so that's how uh, my journey started with the software industry Okay, so when did you get into the leadership journey, and then how was it going till then? Yeah, so the leadership uh, journey, I, I think um, it has to be picked up at a very early level. So I started uh, with my first company, where uh, it is. Uh, leaders as such need not have a title is what i believe so whatever the roles we take we should be able to lead and succeed and um, that's how the leadership uh, style is what i believe so my leadership here with the people it started when i became as a team manager so till then it was with a project management so team manager is altogether a different experience where you will be able to lead the people as well as the business so both has to be in a good um, harmony i could say okay Okay, were there women employees in in the first or second uh, mm. uh, company that you worked? Yeah. yeah, there were many women employees, but I could not see so much on the top. Mm. So uh, there was a very, um, mm. I could say, there were very uh, less numbers um, when I started. And today, what I see, there is a massive shift which has happened. So approximately around thirty-seven percent of the women leaders are in the boards. And in our products uh, development of leadership, uh, where we could see approximately thirty-three percent of the people um, are the women leaders now. Okay, what is your typical leadership style? You will have some guiding principles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's a very good question. So, uh, leadership is very vast. I'm still learning that. Um, so, uh, for me, authenticity and integrity matters the most. So, how authentic you are and how uh, transparent you are uh, for your people, uh, that is what is very important. Is what I believe. In Electrobit, we have leadership promise. lead care and drive so we lead the people by showing our vision and setting a direction and we set the standards by having the high performance culture mm-hmm. and uh, we allow them to fail and then nurture them so that's where mm-hmm. uh, failure is also very important part of our learning so this is how we lead uh, we care by giving the honest and open feedback and uh, it will be um by directional we also accept the feedback we also give the feedback so we care about them by providing a suitable platforms and providing an environmentally and i, I think the psychologically safe environment where they can uh, openly express their opinions and concerns so embrace diversity yeah that is interesting there is a fear of failure but uh, whereas you said no f- failure is part of the mm. uh, no growth and learning uh how do you motivate people who had the fear of failure in them yeah i i think uh, that's a bit tricky but uh when you set your expectation high so when you when we aim for a certain roles or certain uh, topics uh, but at least the path the journey is something which we need to acknowledge mm-hmm. so if we know how far we have come we know how far we can go so uh, it all starts by starting so if we don't start uh, then i think it's uh, very difficult to reach certain positions or certain uh, maturity mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. topics what do you think of you know dei 
been talked about much mm-hmm. you know, diversity mm-hmm. equity and inclusion yeah all three things are interconnected so diversity is a very important topic so uh, having different people having different culture having different experiences bringing all this together brings in a lot of value on the table it fosters the learning it also fosters the creativity and innovation so diversity is very important because people come with a diverse background they have a rich experiences to share so once the platforms are provided these experience sharings will happen and um, yeah this is something which uh, organization also can benefit by having uh, different uh, diverse elements so uh, then coming about the equity um, yeah providing the fair and equal opportunities for all uh, inclusivity is something very important is what i feel it is not hiring the people but providing them the equal opportunities and involving them in the key decision making so is it hiring only for the numbers or are they also involved in the key decision making so this is something uh, which is very important as an organization and the same what we are following today yeah. many companies talk about you know, women empowerment mm. but uh, what according to you are the impediments for organizations mm-hmm. uh, in empowering women yeah um so uh, i think we have moved a little far away from that i see as i mentioned previously i see many women leaders on the top the numbers are increasing so back when i started and to see i see there is a massive shift which has happened in this direction so more and more women employees are voicing it out uh, so earlier um, i think there was certain glass ceiling which women used to think but no longer it is the truth i see people are voicing it out their opinions so people would would like to hear from them so women in general have a lot of hidden potentials so once they start exposing themselves once they start experimenting a lot of uh, traction can happen in this direction and uh, they can really excel so um, having said that there are still certain uh, small challenges i could say mm-hmm. so voicing it out their opinions and coming out of the self doubt or self limiting so these are certain things and also seek support um ask for help so being at home or being at the office uh, do not hesitate to ask for help so the same it happened to me when i had to start with a team manager so i i was continuing in the conventional roles and then i thought one fine day that why don't i go voice voice out what is happening inside me so that it can be an inspiration for others tomorrow so the management very well acknowledge the fact and uh, one and a half years back this was the same situation and then i was courageous enough to go and ask for what i want and today i'm standing as a team manager uh, in the new area of cyber security uh, in electrobit so ask for help people you will be heard and uh, people will acknowledge very very interesting cyber security now that's great that's the topic of the day yeah. in the automotive industry your professional career and your personal life there are two sides of the coin for some or mm. it's going to be an amalgamation of both for some mm. people they say but how do you manage yeah it's a tricky question i could say um, but what i believe is you cannot be a different person at home and different person at office so when we are trying to balance the two boards i think uh, it may not go longer is what i believe uh, very late i realized but it was a very good realization once i started my leadership journey so um, as i said we cannot be different person we need to be a person of integrity so how you treat the people in office the same has to be done at the home so um, that's very important because at the home we cannot take people for granted so the sooner we realize the sooner it is better um, so what i practice is mindfulness so wherever mm. i am i'll be try try to be mindful so be it at work or be it at home so um, apart from that there is other practice which i generally follow is than managing the task manage your priorities so you might have 10 tasks in your list but may, there may be top two priorities so your day or a week is completed if your top two priorities or top three priori- priorities are completed so ask what is a priority seek a buy in self decide and then you manage your week you manage your day 
so that's how i think um working on priorities can bring it a balance in both at home or in office so priorities at home are also important so what is important for that particular week that particular month uh, at home or office so we have to make this balance how do you spend your leisure time yeah uh, getting leisure time is something first we need to work upon but uh, i am very fond of reading so i i don't know how time runs when i am into reading so there are certain things which i do uh, to get the time so i get up early and or maybe the late night i pick up uh, sometimes i try to uh, stretch a more in the weekend and try to read about it read about certain topics or the books um, so reading is something which i am very fond of and then i listen to music i am also a classical singer and uh, i am also encouraging my children to learn music wow. and then in the last i could say when we are in the corporate uh, there will be a lot of stress so meditation is also important so my leisure time goes in meditation so that be it helps me to be more mindful and to reflect what has happened in the day happened in the week how far i have come in the week mm -hmm. so um, what what was my best win in that week and how do i prepare for my next week Wow, fantastic! What is your piece of advice for the young women aspirants to who are willing mm -hmm. to join the automotive industry? Yeah, um, so there are uh, three or four things which I uh, particularly learned a little harder way. So I think um, self awareness. So know your self worth is very important. Uh, voice out. Do not hesitate. People would love to hear from you. Just that have that courage to go speak out uh, to your manager or to your uh, uh, the environment around. Seek support. Seek mentorship. So where uh, uh, it can accelerate your journey. So maybe there are certain people who are in the top position. So uh, learning from their experiences can be very enriching and it sets your direction. Mm. So knowing what you want. is something very important mm. the sooner uh, the woman realizes or any individual realizes it is uh, it is better uh, for them and their career so that uh, it sets a direction for them that what they can try to do in the next decade well sindhu it was wonderful talking to you thank you so much for being part of women in mobility thank you so much yeah see you thank you so much